They were chanting Ali, Ali. Say what you want. Go back through all the years. Agree with the man. Disagree with him. He is a world figure. He does transcend sport. He's a figure not just of athletic history, but of legal history, too. And they're here to see him and throw in sociologic history, too. This fellow has had some impact, a major impact on every avenue of the society. You're looking there at his record, 53 and 2. 37 KOs, the two losses, March 8, 1971, to Joe Frazier, and of course to Kenny Norton, March 31, 1973, when Kenny broke his jaw. Evangelista has had 16 fights. He did lose, as we pointed out in our journalistic piece on the rating procedure of the WBC and the WBA, in his case, he lost to Lorenzo Zainan, an unrated fighter, not in the top 20 of it. Ali weighed in. There it is. Ali at 221 and a quarter. Evangelista, just 22 years of age, weighed in at 209 and a half. As you tell of the tape, 13 years age differential. There's nothing in the record of Evangelista that would document his ability to meet a fighter like Muhammad Ali. The height, I think, is grossly overstated of 6'2 for Evangelista. He looks closer to 5'10 to me. He has virtually no neck. Reminds me of the one-time Chicago White Sox and New York Yankee ball player, Walt No Neck Williams. There's Ali right there. And again, as you look at the tail of the tape, Evangelista's waist two inches larger, his thigh an inch less. The calves are about the same. The ankles measure reasonably the one against the other. Ali, amazingly, down to 221 and a quarter, as I said. And I say amazingly because when I was with him at the press conference announcing the fight, he looked about 245. When I was with him before that in Los Angeles, and there is Ali giving Evangelista the staff. Yes, sir. Instructions which couldn't be clearly heard from the referee, who is Harry Ciccini. The judges are Terry Moore, Ray Klingmeyer, again scoring down here in a five-point must system. We're about ready to go. Eight-ounce gloves, 22-foot ring. I was saying that Ali down incredibly to 221 and a quarter. Nevertheless, as I pointed out in my earlier interview with him, carries a flesh roll about the middle. Evangelista's trunks, he's in the green, the dark, go down to his knees almost. Now let's see what, if anything, he can do. Ali on his toes, quick. Enchanting the crowd with the double shuffle. Hanson hands at his sides. That's because of the nature of the opponent. Ali himself admits the hands aren't as fast as once they were, and neither are the feet. The stamina is suspect. Well, he did go 15 rounds against Norton on September 28th last year at Yankee State. Evangelista threw a left and missed. <laughs> well, we're having an entertainment show. Evangelista's dancing in kind with Ali. Be mentioned, but that's about all we're getting here. 
other than a Rogers and a Stair, Ray Perez. First round action, and Ali elects to entertain the crowd in a different way. Counting down to the end of the first round. There's the rope a dope and the cover up. Angelista couldn't get through it. First round has established exactly nothing. It's been a vaudeville act. We'll be back in a moment. Fido Evangelista, the Uruguayan born, now Spaniard, who is getting a chance to fight for the heavyweight championship of the world. Now he looks like a bullfighter. Moving that left foot, landing it in. is not so elated and like to see some action and they're letting that fact be known both length. hard put to a judgment I'd say this is just a cut above thus far the Tony Anoki affair in Tokyo when Ali went against the rest from Japan it's of a piece perhaps with Jean-Pierre Coupon
beginning to voice its displeasure in the form of booze. Back 
to the rope and dope and the cover up. Really sticking a little more. And the right connected. There's the cover up. Actually, a mild right uppercut got in from Evangelista. Actually got in. Did no damage. Sticks and moves a bit, and then against the ropes, covers up. When you think of those three classic fights against Frazier, when you think of Zaire, when you think of the three fights against Norton, it doesn't make you feel good to see the heavyweight title at stake in a thing like this. in August of 66 when he did away with the Blackpool bus, Brian London. The crowd gets excited. Suddenly as Evangelista pouring leather but still doesn't get through. They get excited at the mere fact that Evangelista is the apparent offensive man at the moment. At least as I was saying, Ali put away Brian London in the third round. Coming to the end of this, the fifth round. We'll be back. That's Ali in his corner. The bell for the sixth round is sounded. Apart from Ali's clowning up to this point, which he especially did in the early rounds, the only thing he's shown that is kind of a remnant of the past is the quick flicking jab. The clowning can go only so far. You have to wonder how much this man really has left as a fighter. Because if he's out of retirement, which he is, he owes one thing for sure. He owes either Jimmy Young or Kenny Norton a fight. The public has a right to expect that fight if Ali is going to collect big money out of retirement. September of 66 when Ali had trouble with Mildenberger, the German Southpaw. And Mildenberger felt so proud. I suspect Evangelista is beginning to feel proud too. But Mildenberger was a difficult fighter. He was a Southpaw. Southpaws give Ali trouble. And he was very game. Has a good left that snapped Evangelista's head. Evangelista throwing leather but not getting through. I want to advise our stations that we'll have a station break at the end of this round. While amateurish left. Angelista's nose is bleeding. That comes from Ali's flicking left. Ali's career, you have to wonder what would happen to Evangelista if Ali went to work. Seeing Ali miss with those lefts over the challenge's head, you can see how he's not nearly as sharp as once he was. Coming down, the end of the round, we'll return after this from our local stations. Oh
Seven, Ali against Evangelist. Ali hardly needs identification. And watching this storyline develop, you have to begin to wonder how much, if anything, Ali can do anymore. Because at this point in time, as a matter of self-respect, you would have expected him to do something. Look at this.
position. Apparently in command after the 10th round. The resurgence of Ali. When, as he put it, it was the closest thing to death. And Joe couldn't come out for the 15th round. What a battle. And that fighter is going through this now. Jimmy Young is in the audience. 
I think he would love to have a little bit of Ali tonight. Anything left. 
than the great fighter we once knew. Look at him miss. Look at him miss. You remember Muhammad Ali? up to the end of round 11. <laughs> we'll be back in just a moment. Round 12, believe it or not. And the aggressor, although ineffectually so, is Alfredo Evangelista. Ali has missed again and again and again all night. Occasional scoring with the jab. Evangelist hasn't scored at all. He has one good left that we showed in replay. Some rounds back. Nothing familiar about this, Muhammad Ali. Nothing. Oh, holy fight for you. Get off of him, Ali. Get off of him. The way this fight is going, Evangelista will make the World Boxing Council rating system look good. Get off of him, get off his neck. I never had it. Stop punch, stop punch. Based upon past experience with them as our little exercise in journalism proved, this could enable him to move Evangelista up four more spots. left the arena because he found the fight unacceptable. We're looking for him, hope to find him, get his view of what's been non-transpiring here tonight. One minute, one minute. Get off his neck, Ali. Get off of him. I got you. You know, Ali actually looks tired. He really does, Chris Schenkel. He looks tired. And what's he done? What a job our pictures have done. It's pretty difficult to add captions to the pictures. They really tell the story. is certainly winning this round as we approach the end of round 12. Look at him. He's all over him. He's not connected. We're going to stay here. And that was a good round for Evangelista. And Ali looks absolutely exhausted. There can be no more limericks after a performance like this. No reliance on the past. No mythology. Chris said the pictures speak for themselves. Look at him. Art, I think we uh, should be very thankful we had some lighter division bouts that were exciting tonight. Heavyweight division has always been glamorous and exciting, and it's lost a lot of glitter, I think, right here in Maryland once more. He's got three more rounds to get through. Then we'll see. Trying to dance and trying to take the offensive, but backing off as the young 
Bean keeps pursuing him. he came out of retirement is his personal business. It's conjectured that in spite of all the monies he has made because of the settlement of his matrimonial difficulties, Ali needs more money. But the way this thing has gone, he landed a good right there and he hurt Evangelista. Angelista was hurt, but the kid has courage. From the beginning, he was unafraid. It was as if he sensed that he wasn't facing the Muhammad Ali of the past. a lot of them land. That missed. Less than a minute to go in the 13th round. How do you think they're scoring this, you folks at home? What do you think, Chris? Well, I have... Uh... Evangelista winning three rounds, seven, eight, and twelve. I think you're probably right. <laughs> they call Louis Firpo the wild bull of the Pampas. The only difference was Louis was good enough to knock Dempsey out of the ring at the old polo grounds back in 1924. Look at that, Evangelista scored there. Mark approaching the end of the round. Now let's go to Frank Gifford in our studio. Okay, Hard, we'll give you a little breather down there. A couple of baseball scores tonight. The surprising Chicago Cubs made it five straight wins, 13 out of 15. They beat San Diego 9 to 6. Also in the National League, Philadelphia. Ken, Los Angeles 6. Five run third inning. That's 11 games over Cincinnati. Okay, we did have some fights earlier tonight, if you were with us. We had a light junior lightweight championship bout. Alfredo Escalari in against Carlos Becerrell. Let's take a look at that knockout. This is eighth round action. Escalera finally catching up with a very tough fighter from Pomona, California, Carlos Becerrell. And that's how it ended. A junior lightweight championship. And of course, earlier, Roberto Duran beat Javier Munez. Those are the two fights that took place earlier. Okay, let's rejoin the coach and Chris Schenkel. I think they're the card carriers. We're about ready for the start of round 14. A perfectly endless fight. I use that word in quotes. Give Evangelista all the credit in the world. He's been a pursuing fighter. He was unafraid coming in. tried to point out is that he is not a quality fighter. It is questionable that he should have been ranked 10th, but we showed you how that rating came about. And one would have thought that against such an opponent, Ali, would have more left than he appears to have based upon this performance. going to try to explain this away. You can see that 
Muhammad Ali is doing the scoring. Chris said he's given Evangelista three rounds. I've given him four. What we've been through in judges. And the way a fight is scored in the recent months and years. Pretty good jab by Ali there. All right. and final round and Ali sat down and I mean he was fatigued and he is fatigued and there's no laughter in his eyes and there can't be any joy in his heart not after this tonight fight his touch gloves break for the 15th and final round and Ali would like to rescue some vestige of self-respect here the left. One punch at a time. Left's got in. Three of them separately. A fourth. A fifth. The right keeps missing. The timing so on. The reflex is so slow. And Evangelista keeps pursuing. Trying to connect. combination there by Ali. A combination for a change. A one-two. Ali, as you can see visibly, although he now dances on his toes, he drooped in that corner for just a moment. The catch of breath. Left scores. is trying now to bull him to out muscle him with his body to push through the cover up it's far differently from the way most thought it would a good left by Ali is Evangelista. He missed one, landed one. We're counting down to the end of this inglorious affair.
over. Evangelista has gone the distance against Muhammad Ali as the fans boom to distraction. And Evangelista's corner, they are hugging him. Heaven knows, maybe they think he's won the fight. Heaven knows, when they score it, maybe he will have won the fight. I've been around too long. But I'll tell you, what we saw was an exercise in torpor, not to be believed. Let me go into the ring and see if I can get an explanation from Ali. Please cover for me, Chris Schenker. Okay, Howard, tough night for you. Tough night for Muhammad Ali. Couldn't put it together. 35 years old. Shell of what he was. I'm sure you all agree. But this man, 22 years old, can be very happy. He went 15 rounds with the world champion. Had little to offer. Pretty inept. Nevertheless, he was a huge underdog. 7 to 1, 8 to 1, 9 to 1, whatever. Howard now having a little trouble getting up as uh, the Ali corner is directly above us here. And it is really crowded. Despite his performance, he draws that crowd still. And if you join us, we'd like to tell you that earlier in exciting bouts, an eight-round knockout for the world junior lightweight champion, Alfredo Escalero over Bessero. And then the world lightweight champion, Roberto Duran, won a unanimous 10-round decision over Javier Muniz. But right now, uh, Howard working his way, trying to get to the champion. As we wait for the decision here, it'll be Harry Cicchini, the referee, and the two judges to the left and the right as you watch the fight with us, Terry Moore and Ray Klingmeyer. A lot of pushing and shoving. Ali wanted to leave the ring early, but was called back. Spanish radio would love to get at him. ABC television would like to get a comment from him, but I doubt if he's in too much of a talkative mood. Now, the decision. Here is the decision. Judge Terry Moore has it 72-64, Ali. 72-64, Terry Moore. Ali. Klingmeyer has it 72-64, Ali. Chikini has it 71-65, Ali. Winner by unanimous decision, still heavyweight champion of the world, Muhammad Ali. His 56th professional fight. He now has won 54. Right. Here's Howard. As you can see, I have a very tired champion here. First of all, I want to say hi salam alaikum to the chief minister of religion of Islam in the uh, Islam in the West. I'm a Wazi Muhammad. Also, to my main man, Tom Joyner, who's a WVUN jerk off and this jerk and that. And uh, uh, the great speed race, uh, I forgot the name. All right. Now we've got to get down to cases. What do you say? What do you have to say? Because you have been in the view of many of us, the greatest fighter who has yet lived. What do you say about your performance tonight? I say that I fought a man who will be a top contender. Just like Ken Norton was no bad on fighting, Young was no bad on the reveals of the hypocrites of boxing, that the great fighters such as Foreman, Bobby, don't go like you think, Leo. The unknowns always do a tough fight. I'm so thankful for the fight that man put up. You all know now, he is no bum. And I promise you, he will go longer with Norton than Bobby. Fine. It's not a nobody. What about that nobody you saw tonight? Well, I didn't movie. see. Hear that music? Columbia Pictures, 19 this month. And last night, she's coming out of my movie. Right. All of you go out to see my movie. Right. The Let's forget the, the plugs for a moment. No, you plug I... yourself. I plug myself. All right. Now, listen. You've got to be honest and fair with yourself as well as with the public. Your reflexes weren't what they That's used right. to be tonight. No heavyweight, not even that 22 year old boy, can dance 15 rounds like I did. So I'm not what I used to be. To show you I'm a legend, the greatest fight in the history of the world. Off man, 35, fat as you say, still I can outdance any heavyweight in the history of boxing. That shows you I'm in a class of my own. All right. Getting there, I danced through the whole fight. Leaving aside your performance tonight. And you all notice how close they all duck that issue of how good I dance. Not ducking any issue. At this point in time, 
if you're going to fight again, you've got to fight either Young or North. You owe them that. I'm on the mat. I'm trying to get out of shape. I know he's out there jumping the joint. Let him make a dollar. He's number four defender. The World Boxing Association has told me that what I say is right. Norton and Young have to eliminate each other to prove they're number one. Because Jimmy Young, Jimmy Young beat George Fulmer, who's the legal number one defender. He's ranked over Norton. People want me to fight both of them. I can't fight both of them. If I fight Norton and Duck Young, they say I'm Duck and Young. If I fight Young and don't fight Norton, they say Duck Norton. Let those two fight it out, and I get two birds and one stone. Okay. Hi, Salam Aleikum. All the Muslim brothers Congratulations in the world of all you. races, trees, and colors. Salam Aleikum. May Allah bless all. Okay. Allah Akbar. Good Peace luck to you. Muhammad Rasul Allah. Allah Akbar. Let's go back to Chris Schenkel at ringside. And again, repeating, 71-65, 72-64, 72-64, five-point bus system, unanimous decision. Dull encounter for the champion. Travel arrangements made through in a promotional fee paid by United Airlines. By the friendly skies of United, where you're the boss. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television.